Hi, have we got any people on here? Hi, you missed a bit. Yep, you did. I didn't realise that it's stuck, sorry. So I, I'm just trying to get myself back and going again. <laughs> I'll try and edit it up where everyone's going, but if anyone's still in the other one, I don't know if they can tell people to hop over here. Oh, I've got Levin back again. Excellent. Sorry about that, guys. It's <laughs> busy chatting away to myself and um, realised it wasn't working. Okay. Why has that gone small? Sorry. Joy of... Um, doing stuff live. Now I've lost the chat bit. Hang on. Oh, goodness. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. Okay. Hang on. Yep, sorry, I will get straight into it. I am just, no, don't need captions. Do need chat. Oh, goodness. Right, okay. Hello, lovelies. I, I will be with you in a second. <laughs> Um, so as you can see, while you were um, still in the other chat, I jumped onto this one um, and I cut out some, but I will go back and explain what I did. Because nothing's working the way it's supposed to, so, you know. Got about three on there at the moment. Excellent. Right. I can't see comments at the moment. I am really sorry. I don't know what is going on. So I promise I will go back and look at them. And if something magical happens that I can see comments again, um, I will try it. Oh, there we go. Oh, goodness. <sighs> right, stress. <laughs> Yay. Sorry about this, people. Very professional of me. Okay, so I have started to cut out my, um, what you call it, my page. So make sure you've got a sharp knife. I redid my blade a little while ago, but I will probably have to do it again. These are really um, easy cuts. Most of them around the S's and the curves are a bit tricky. So just go slow. If you feel your um, knife is dragging or if it's tearing the paper, change your blade. So it is really important that you have sharp blades to do this. Otherwise, you're just not going to get the nice clean cuts that you need. So all we're doing is just going in and cutting out the negative pieces. You notice I'm working from the outside of the page back again. Okay, really, really important. Um, I'm going to have to leave a little bit of a border here because that C is so close to the edge. So by doing it um, from the bits I don't mind cutting out, it gives me a bit of an idea of what I'm doing. So remembering that um, I am going to have a little bit of a border around this. Um, this area is going to be blank, but this is where this um, journal comes in really, really handy because it's got the dots on it. So I'm just going to leave about a centimetre and I'm going to go across about a centimetre. And because this has got the dots on it, it makes it really, really simple. So 
as I was saying before, I don't know if it got cut off or not. If I was doing this um, and I wasn't going to put the acetate in to help um, protect that page, I would have moved this down um, and had a border the whole way around it. So just be aware that how you are cutting stuff out will make a little bit of a difference to what you are doing. So um, you may find it easier if you cut sort of the border here because that gives you a bit of an idea of where you are going. Okay, so that means I know I can cut this part of the C, but I'm not going to cut over here, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to have some of this dangling in the air. So it seems a very odd way to do um, cutout pages, but it's really fun. And it makes your brain think, which is what I really enjoy about it. You have to do a little bit of creative problem solving. So you can see here, because I know I'm cutting off this bottom bit, I don't mind that I'm cutting past where I need to, which again, for beginners, is really, really useful because you don't have to have those precise cuts that you would do if you're doing, say, a different type of lace cut page. So you can have the nice straight lines. Makes it a lot easier. So what I'm doing is getting rid of most of the um, larger pieces of um, paper first just so I can sort of see what I'm working with a little bit. Okay, and so you can see what I'm working with. So now I can go in and remove the in-between bits. And again, for those people who've just joined, really sorry, there is part one. I will hopefully join it all up together um, afterwards and it will hopefully make sense. And for those of you who are sort of seeing this paper cutting, um, this is inspired by the amazing Claire Stead, I love art journal love. So um, I will, when this goes up and I do all the, um, Bits and pieces I need to do for YouTube, I will put her links in as well. Okay, so just go slow. I have done this a bit, so I'm probably moving a lot faster than someone who may have not done it before, and that's okay. Just take your time. Um, if you do find you've got wrist problems and so on, um, you may find that you need to do a little bit and have a break. So that's why I really like this project too, because you could maybe do a little bit of this, then go back and do your tree or do a bit of decoration in the background and then flip back and do a bit more. So you've got a little bit of um, stuff you can play around with. But yeah. Always a bit of magic when you start to remove stuff and you sort of just see it hanging there, which I love. Right. So, so how are people feeling about this? Do they think it might be doable or are you freaking? <laughs> isn't as difficult as it looks because it is straight cuts there's not too many curved cuts so you um don't have to move your wrist very much which i think is again why i've really enjoyed doing it um, my wrist doesn't get too sore awesome Diane! can't wait to see what you come up with and as I said, um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you will notice, yes, I've done this sort of Christmassy theme, but this so does not need to be Christmassy themed. You can do whatever you fancy with this. So um, 
no. I've been using a lot of Nat's beautiful faces, collage faces, and doing quotes over the top of them. Because you know I'm a bit quote mad, so the fact that I can actually do nice chunky quotes, I really love. Again, as you go along, just remove your excess and that will give you a bit of idea. One, where you haven't cut, like there, and two, what it's looking like. <laughs> um, it's amazing what masking tape can do. So if you do accidentally cut through somewhere, just tape it up and colour it black. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, as I said... I'm putting some acetate behind there. So if I did cut through something or if it didn't stay, I'm still going to have a substrate there to hold it together. So it's actually a really, um, this is a really great beginner paper cutting project because you've got some hidden supports there to help you um, if, if something does accidentally go wrong. So it's... Um, be brave, have a go. Everything can always be fixed. And if you're really worried, that's when those um, borders around stuff can really help out. Just to give that little bit of extra strength. Now, I am going to continue this border up here as well. Just to cut out the last little bit. Now, because I've got that border in here, I am actually going to cut out the inside of the C to help that stand out. Okay, so when I take that away, that's what it looks like. Okay, so you can see the Christmas tree, you can see the words on it. You can see bits and pieces peeping through. Vellum would definitely work instead of acetate. Yes, perfect. Now, because that was quite black on black, and obviously you haven't finished the background and so on, I do want a little bit more of the tree to peek through. So I'm going to cut out the insides of some of my letters. You don't have to do this. It's just something I like to do because I like to see as much of the background as possible. Um... And with the stencil set that I've been using, it does come with these little bits, but to be honest, I think I've lost them, so I, <laughs> I just freehand it. But it just helps lighten it up just a little bit. Go. Oops. You can get rid of all your rubbish. Yeah. Oh, even if it wasn't translucent, you would still, because you can kind of see through it, you would see there's something behind it. So it would give you a really nice um, frosted look, I suppose. So um, it would be really nice. Okay, so there you go. So I grab a piece of white paper. Some white paper. Find white paper, Neve. So that's what the cutout looks like, as is. Okay, now to help brighten that up a little bit, I am going to go in with some paint pens just to light it up a bit because we're talking about lighting up the Christmas tree. I am going to go the full way around my letters. So this is um, for Australians. 
the um, what do you call it? Life of Color Mirror Effect paint pens. Um, I'm not sure if Nat's still on or not, but I got them from Nat, so she stocks them. They are amazing and they don't stink. Um, for my American or other people in other countries, any metallic pen will work. Um, these, I suppose, I quite like the Krylon leafing pens, which I used to use all the time. So um, I don't know if any of you have still got those in your stash. We found them really hard to get in Australia because they had the um, alcohol base, I think, and they stopped posting them. So these are a really good alternative. I think there are some other mirror chromey type pens that you can get though. So obviously it doesn't have to be. This would look just as good with white. I just like, you know, Christmas and metallics personally. So by doing this, um, this has two reasons for doing it. One, like I do with all my fonts, it helps push it out of the page. But two, it also helps cover up that white pencil I used. So um, on a lot of the pieces I have done, I haven't done this. and I, Or I've sort of done it like I do with my fonts and just done it on one side. But... Because this is standing alone, I like the fact that it's got pen around the whole thing. So again, personal preference, depending on what colours you want to use, you know, you might get your Posca paint pens out and just use a colour that contrasts really nicely with what you've got on your page. It's gone all fuzzy again. I don't know why. I hope that means it's not doing something silly. No, I think it's because I had my head in the way. Okay, with this as well, this is a really handy thing. If you have gone off into the border, it just means that you can actually outline your letter and show where it's supposed to be. So it does give you that little bit of manoeuvrability. Um, if you need to go into your um borders that you can outline your letters and still make them look like part of everything else it also means that when you have overlapped your letters you can still give them a little bit of definition so you can sort of see what the letters are supposed to be But as I have done here, surprisingly, it is a good idea to have a piece of scrap paper when you're doing this because you can see I am going off the edges. So um, when I originally did this on my test piece, I didn't. And my Christmas tree ended up with some uh, metallic highlights, <laughs> which worked, but um, it wasn't quite what I was intending. So because I squished this in a little bit, I can, particularly by outlining it like this, I can sort of fix up that M to make it look like it's gone behind the A. You can see some of my letters are a little bit wobbly, but that's okay. Helps add to the uh, handmade nature of it all. So I have noticed uh, as I've been doing this, I've forgotten to cut out a few little pieces. So I'll just go back in and fix those up with my knife in just a second. And it may not bother some of you. So, again, up to you. If you find bits that you don't mind that they haven't been cut out, then we'll just leave them. Oops. I 
a little bit in here with the R. I just try, like try and get as much light in as possible. Up here with the eye. Okay, the other thing I am going to do is I am going to go around the border just to make it look part of the entire thing. So these are all very much up to you bits. You don't have to do these bits. Um, whatever works for your page. I just like the little frame of it. It just helps offset it against the um, the rest of my journal page. Okay. So now you can see the difference because that now stands out from the background. The other thing that I'm going to do, again, these chrome pens come in a pack of three. So this is the gold, and I really like, particularly if I'm talking about lights, doing my key letters. So just going through and putting dots. So it's just a, an optional extra. You don't have to do this, but I like the, the fun look. I always say I'm going to go to the nth degree you choose when to stop how are you all going out in, in YouTube land any questions I like the one about vellum. Vellum would be beautiful with this, I reckon. Please, 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 if you do this, um, tag me in it just so I can see what you come up with. I love to see how people put twists and turns on things. So I'd love to see how the vellum works out. Or if anyone else has got any other bright ideas of stuff that they could use. I don't know how you all stand me doing this at real time. <laughs> Be so boring watching me put dots on it. Just happy watching. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's why I always speed up my videos because I look back at them and go, oh, it's too slow. She's just dotting. Speed it up. I suppose it's nice to see how long it actually takes me in real life. Oh, I forgot that bit. It's been so long since I've done a class. It's actually nice to hang out with you all. Okay, so light up the Christmas tree. You can see that really lights up now. Um, just having those metallics, because of that mirror finish, they really brighten the entire thing up. <laughs> it's so satisfying. Oh, awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're going to flip back onto this page because it looks a bit bleh at the moment. 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to put a little bit of shading in and I am going to go in with my Stabilo oil pencil and I'm just going to really roughly draw around those sort of triangular bits that I originally drew. So sort of curvy over, really rough and ready. Okay, I'm also going to go down around my tree trunk. I'm going to take a wet brush. <laughs> That's the first time I've said, heard someone glad for insomnia. So I'm, I'm glad I'm, hopefully I'll put you to sleep. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you could join us. It's funny. Um, I've had a few people, and they mean it in the nicest possible way, but it's just the oddest thing to hear. I'm um, going, oh, Neve, I just love listening to you. You put me to sleep every night. It's like. Thank you. <laughs> I wish it could work so well on my children. <laughs> so I'm just wetting that down just to get a bit of sort of shape and shading into my tree. Now, it's not going to stay like that because that's a bit harsh and heavy. But it's just sort of giving a little bit of depth to the tree. And we'll go in with a black pen so I can fix that up in a minute. Now this is where you can have lots and lots of fun. Go in with my trusty splatter guides, which I don't usually use, but I'm I'm doing the right thing because you guys are all watching. Um, if you had um, acrylic inks or a watered down paint, you can use this. This is just the metallic, um, what you call it, gloss spray. So this is the the. Um, what you call it? Ster Sterling. I'm having. Hello from a fizzy fellow Aussie art journaler. Hi, Emerald Moon. Hope you're enjoying it. Where is my fellow Aussie art journaler from? Where, what state are you joining us from? I'm a I'm a Tassieite. Okay, so I am just as good old Dina would say, putting pox in the background. Um, white um, acrylic. Ink would look beautiful on this too, so. I could have masked off my tree as well, but I'm quite happy to have it sort of like snowfall going across my entire thing. I just love, particularly that sterling on the black is so metallic. It looks white on screen, but it actually is this beautiful. Um, silvery colour and then you've got that gold coming through almost like stars in the background. Okay, so now I am going to go in with, and I forgot to put this on the, um, what you call it, what I was going to use, but it's it's an optional extra, as is everything. And if I can find a palette knife. Here we go. So this is the Tim Holtz Grit Paste, the Snowfall one. I'm just putting some on, oops. Particularly on my snow down the bottom. Oops. Now this kind of dries and I am putting it over my tree trunk. So it sort of blends it in a little bit. This does dry, sort of translucent, transparent, but it's got a little bit of sort of glitter to it. Oh, not glitter. Um, Textury, whitey. It's hard to explain, really. <laughs> I'm doing a really good job, I know. But it's just to put some extra texture on the tree. 
so that's why I wasn't too fussed about um, my background but this is what I meant about the um, if you were using water soluble inks for example so if I was using oxides I wouldn't be able to do this because it would smear it everywhere oh awesome thank you so much that's just beautiful um yeah I used to love going up and teaching in Brisbane I have to go up there one day again it's back in my opals days okay the other thing I'm going to put on is this frosted crystal I thought it was glitter oh it's an embossing medium duh <laughs> that's why it didn't work the way I wanted it to okay um so this is a frosted crystal embossing powder um if you have um what do you call it glitter you could use that I don't know where my glitter is be honest I have got some glittery stuff. I'm just going to pour it over the page. This explains so much. I thought I'd bought um, I thought I'd bought the rock candy glitter, and I just thought this is a finer version of it. So this is actually embossing powder, but it kind of gives you the effect I want. Okay, I'm just going to pour it on. Oh, and pour it all everywhere. Excellent, Maeve. Good job, me. <laughs> right. I've also got, because that wasn't, um, what you call it? glitter per se I've actually got some clear glitter as well that I'm just going to pop over to get a little bit of glittery glitz the, the splatter in the background is pretty awesome it's going to give me a bit of glitter to play with again I'm doing the nth degree you can stop at any time you don't have to go full neve but you know it's Christmas. I'm starting to create an avalanche around me. You know how I did all that lovely cleaning up? I'm not sure how well it's working out for me. <laughs> so this will eventually dry it clear um, once it's embossed, because this is obviously embossing powder, which I didn't realize until I read the uh, label. So I still see the colours from underneath, but it will give me that texture and it will give me that frosted look, like it's got snow on it. Um, and particularly with that snowfall um, texture paste underneath as well. So because the texture paste was quite heavy, it's gonna take a little while to emboss, but you'll sort of see that colour coming through. Um, and it's gonna be really subtle but it just helps um, add to the effect. You can sort of see where it's starting to, to come through. Um, in the close-ups, I'll show you, you'll see, see the texture from it. The Neve degree, the Neat degree, yes. <laughs> My mum always used to laugh at me. Her big quote to me was, know when to stop, Neve. Know when to stop. It's like, uh, I don't think I've still learnt that. I, I still don't know where to stop. 
it's quite interesting watching my videos back when I'm voiceovering them because it's like, oh, I could have stopped there. Oh, I could have stopped there. Oh, I should have stopped there. <laughs> so I am not going to emboss this the full way. So it's still going to look a little bit dusty. Um, and like snow sort of sitting on it. Just in case you want, it's sort of going, oh, but there's patches you've missed. So that's, that's the reason why. So I'm melting it enough that it's going to stay on the page, but it's still got texture. Now down the bottom here, <coughs> excuse me, um, the texture paste is still a bit wet. It's not coming off my hands though. So um, what I've done is underneath where it's still opaque is still um, damp. It's not completely dry because when it dries, it will become totally trans transparent. Um, but it is dry enough that I could, you know, close the book um, or, you know, work on this page and I'm not going to cause too much problem. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so if you've got a brush, you can sort of just brush off the excess. Oh. Okay. I'm going to lift this up, hopefully, so you can sort of see some of that texture and what I'm rabbiting on about. Particularly down the bottom, you can sort of see that glitter catching the light, hopefully. It's really hard because the, um, oh, there you go. You just got that little sp sprinkly over the background. Okay, so turning this back over, that's what I can see at the moment. Again, I could stop here if I wanted it, <laughs> wanted to, but why would you do that? Um, what I'm going to go in with next is um, my black paint pen. And I'm just going to, again, go over with some scritchy, scratchy lines just to define it a little bit more. So this, obviously, I could have done before I put the embossing powder on. To be perfectly honest, probably would have been a better time to do it. Um, but you do get some really cool effects by going over the... Um, embossing powder. You'll notice on the corners too I'm being a bit haphazard and getting some sort of natural shading just by sort of swinging my pen in a little bit to go round. So, you know, it always makes me laugh when I think back to school. I stay in the lines, draw nice straight lines, you know, don't splatter. And it's like, that's all I do now. I splatter. <laughs> Right, okay, so I'm going to leave that for a little bit. I'm going to go on to my acetate now. Um, just make myself organised. If, if you've got a gel plate, you might need that this for the next bit too. Um, or if you've got a white pen. Not white pen. So um, I don't know what I'm talking about. So this is the acetate. This is the Dina Wakeley one. It's quite thick which is really good because this is um, going to help strengthen this because this is very wibbly wobbly. It would tear pretty easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is to glue it down. Um, I am going to glue it down to the top of the page as much as possible. I should have done a little bit of measuring before I did this because there is actually a teeny tiny gap down the bottom, but that's okay. We can deal with that. I'm not going to quite measure up at the top, but there's enough there that's going to give me strength. So I'm just going in with um, my glue. Now, I'm not going to glue down the bottom here because I am scraping by to, to get my acetate down here. I should have made that a little bit wider at the bottom. Um, but I am going to be able to put it up here and I'm just going to go round, roughly round the letters. Um, this will dry clear. So any glue that you've got, um, I've, this is the 
glitter glue from what you call it Art Institute glitter which I actually never use for gluing glitter down <laughs> PVA or whatever you, whatever white glue you use will will work um, I haven't Oh, have I? No, I've used gel medium to do it, but for something like this, um, I do want to have a fairly good adhesive bond um, fairly immediately. So gel medium does tend to take five to ten minutes to actually set up. So take that how you wish. <laughs> glue, glue down with whatever works for you. Um, but I find having something that glues down pretty immediately is useful for me. Okay, so you can see now that's not wibbling around anywhere. I've got the strength behind it to um, work on, which I really appreciate. Okay, you can see down here is a bit wibbly wobbly. I could probably actually go in with a really thin bit of washi except I don't have any black washi. Do you have clear tape though? That might work. If I can find the end. Does anyone else have that problem at Christmas time with no nails? That and my children keep stealing my um, sticky tape. So this is just a little bit of clear tape. So hopefully it won't be too obvious from the front. Um, but it's just going to keep that nice and firm down the bottom there. Yep, that works. Cool. Okay, we're nearly finished. But of course, add more, Neve. Add more. So I'm going to do some stamping on here of some um, snowflakes. So I've just got some snowflake stamps. These are Tim Holtz ones. These are little ones that I had a long time ago when I used to design stamps. Um, and I'm going to stamp with paint. So the reason for that is I do have a Hero Arts white ink pad, which is really, really cool. Um, but it needs heat setting because it's a pigment ink. Acetate really doesn't like heat. So I'm trying to keep the heat off this, or if you do, just really small blasts of it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you just need to be really aware of that. So I'm just going to put some paint out. Obviously, you could do this straight onto your thing um, board, but I just find I get more even coverage if I do it onto a gel plate. Um, I'm not going to waste my paint either so I'm going to come back to that okay and I'm just going to stamp all over my acetate I am going to put um, just something black in here so I can actually see where I'm stamping more for anything else okay oops get that out of the way So I'm doing this big stamps first. I am stamping over the border as well. It doesn't stamp necessarily perfectly, but that's okay. I get the impression. So you get this sort of snowfall effect around it. Okay. I wonder if I can get that up there. Hmm. Can she do it? If I bob the builder, can she do it? Yes, she can. Look at me being all clean and putting masking down for you guys. I wouldn't usually do this, I'd just try and chance it. Go. Okay. 
Okay. So if you've got any bits in the middle that, um, or if you've got a Lishler stamp, you can use that. So I'm just going to get my wet wipe. One thing, if you are stamping with paint, it's not very often you see me do this, um, but they're not perfectly clean, but I would recommend getting the acrylic paint off your stamps. So these are just little fillery in stamps. If can overlap a little bit, that's okay. Um, I could be really cheeky and try and get in the middle there, but I'm not going to chance my luck. <laughs> I'm going to try and do this again though, because why not? There we go. Excellent. Oh, what do you reckon? There we go. Couldn't help myself. Um, see? Doesn't know when to stop. I will stop now, I promise. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So that shouldn't take too long to dry. In fact, that's already dry, but just don't rush it. Okay, but you can sort of see how that works. So I've got the picture behind it. So when I've now got this, I've got my snowflakes on my tree. The final thing that I'm going to do is to add some more white onto this page. Um, and again, you don't have to do this, but it's me. I've got paint on my brayer and I don't want to waste it. So I'm just going to touch over the top of that texture in my tree. Just hit the tops, oops, and not there. Don't do that. I'll leave. Right, well, we know where the big star is going, don't we? <laughs> the good thing about acrylic paint if you really bugger it up you can wipe it away quickly ish that's going to be a little bit but that's okay we can deal with that what i am going to do is go up the side so and sort of frame it off a little bit and then put my little bit of masking here I don't know how this is going to work. Just sort of frame it up a little bit. So you get that sort of grungy, grungy effect. Again, your brayer, clean it off. And same with my um, what you call it gel gel plate. Just clean it off. Sorry, if I don't do it now, I'll forget about it. Gel plate's not quite as important as the um, stamps, however, because you can eventually get the prints off with that one. Okay, so I am going to blast this a little bit just to dry it off. Kind of does make it look like a snow, a snow globe, doesn't it? And especially when you're going to have this transparency over the top, which is really cool. So again, like any of these steps, you could have stopped at any, any point. Um, I'm just going to go back in and right over this so it looks like it's supposed to be like this. Okay. 
And the final thing that I'm going to do is pop in some... Additional stars. Mostly to hide up that little mistake there. <laughs> And still get that glowy, glittery effect. And if you wanted to, you could obviously put a star on the top of your tree. So I didn't really leave much room for my star, but I'm just going back in with my paint pen. And if you didn't want to freehand it like I have, you can certainly cut it out, punch it out. Um, <clears throat> use a piece of colour card. Just going to get my black pen. And just to shape up my star and again, Scritchy, scratchy lines. I don't know what it is about scritchy, scratchy lines, but scritchy, scratchy lines just finish everything off. Okay, and if you want to, go in and pop some baubles on the tree. Put a bit of texture on my tree trunk. And the last, last thing, which I actually forgot to do, was just put a bit of a bit of a shadow on the top of my hill. So I would have done that um, before I put the uh, the snow on which I forgot because I got distracted by the snow and finding out it's embossing powder. <laughs> but again, it just, just grounds it a little bit. You can put in a little bit of a shadow for the tree just to make it look a little bit realistic. Um, the good thing about this is because you've got the texture on here, it kind of disperses it naturally, like a fuzzy shadow anyway. So, yeah. So there we go. There's our Christmas extravaganza, Christmas card thing. Our page, so you've got the snowy going around it. The only other thing I'm going to do before we finish off is this is slightly larger than it needs to be so I'm just going to chop it off so it's not sticking out and the good thing is even though I know that that piece of acetate doesn't go to the very top of my page hi Gary how are you um because I've got that board around it you really can't see that it's um actually not where it's supposed to be so which is quite cool hope it helps if I can cut straight there you go so you've got your floating snowflakes light up the Christmas tree and then we've got a Christmas page on the inside with all our texture and yumminess and grunginess of the um, 
sprayer and the embossing powder and the mirrored images. Um, it just catches the light. And then if I flip that over, sorry, you're probably seasick from me holding this up nice and close, but here's all the stamping on the acetate. So I'm very sorry about the uh, before <laughs> and after with the with the, the class, but I'm really glad you could all join us and to all those people who have joined in later. Um, I hope you have lots and lots of fun. Uh, obviously, this is a bit of a holiday type project, but look, you could do this in any way, shape or form that you want to do. Um, you know, it could be Christmas decks. It could be a figure of a face. So if I go back to this journal, um, this is my paper cutting journal. Um, you can see here how I've sort of gone on from doing this with the... This is one of the Natalie May pictures in the background. Um, you can see I sort of left the border and I started over on this side of the page, so I've got that bit of a border around it. Then I started to experiment with longer words, put the acetate behind it. And this is a printed acetate, which gave me the idea for the stamping on it. That's the original page I did. So you can see I've got a smaller part of text. Um, I haven't gone quite as crazy in the background with this one um, and a little bit of metallics in there. And then today is where it's just, you know, me and the nth degree. <laughs> So I hope you had lots of fun with this uh, or will have lots of fun with this project. And um, please, please, please show me your variations. I would love to see where you take this and what you do with it. Um, have so much fun. Please check out um, Claire Stead's YouTube and Instagram because this cutting is um, inspiration from her. She's amazing at it, so um, check her out as well. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for supporting me. You guys are amazing. I cannot believe that we hit over 18,000 subscribers on this channel um, a month ago, I think, which is ridiculous. Um, I was really excited when I got 500 subscribers to begin with, So, I, and I've nearly got um, 5,000 on Instagram as well. So um, those of you who aren't on my Instagram account, check that out because that's where a lot of my, um, all my up-to-date pages are, um, my works in progress. So they may not be up on YouTube yet, but they will be. So it gives you a bit of an opportunity to see what will be coming up. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, just think when you come home from work, you can play. So that'd be lovely. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a very, very lovely holiday season um, with whatever you do to celebrate. And, um, yeah, just have fun. And I hope you keep creating um, or you have some time to create. And I hope Santa puts some art supplies under your tree because, you know, we all need more art supplies. So, yes. We had lots of fun hike, hiking. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and please rewatch later. There are two videos. So um, for those of you watching this going, how did you start? There are two videos. So I will in the description box um, link both of them. See you all later. Have an amazing, amazing time. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye.